Now, as a public service, paid for by the National Radish Growers Institute, we present another educational session with the idol of the nation's youngsters, Mr. Science. As we look in on the uh, modern, well-equipped laboratory today, we see that little Jimmy Schwab is just arriving to watch Mr. Science perform his latest fascinating experiment. Oh, hello there, Jimmy. I was afraid you might not get here in time to watch me perform my latest fascinating experiment. Oh, wild horses couldn't keep me away, Mr. Science. Not that uh, I can think of any objection wild horses would have to my coming here. <laughs> uh, what's the fascinating experiment for today, sir? Well, uh, today, Jimmy, we're going to demonstrate how reducing fr uh, friction enables many of our mechanical devices to operate more efficiently. Now, to prove that point, we're going to use this rusty hinge that I've attached to two blocks of wood here on the workbench. Now, notice how inefficiently it operates due to the friction. See? Gosh, oh, hemlock, Mr. Science. That grating noise goes right up and down my little spine. <laughs> Isn't there some way you can perform the experiment without making that awful squeak? Yes, in fact, our main objective is to eliminate that squeak because that'll mean we've also reduced friction. But that point will become much more apparent to you after we perform today's experiment. Now, son, to demonstrate how reducing friction makes anything with moving parts operate more efficiently... We must first show how difficult it is to bend this hinge back and forth when it's dry and rusty. Holy cow, Mr. Science. That sound just makes every nerve in my body twitch. It's as bad as scraping a fingernail across a blackboard. All right. Well, now we'll get rid of that noise in just a moment, Jimmy. What you hear that annoys you so much is really just the sound of friction as two pieces of bare metal rub against each other. But that friction can be greatly reduced by inserting the fluid from this can between the layers of metal. Gee, well, it is, Mr. Science. That's a cute little can. Does the stuff inside of it have a name? Yes, it does, Jimmy. It's called lubricating oil. Lubricating oil. Golly, Wally Two-Shoes. Wait till I tell my big brother I've seen some of that. He thinks he's so smart just because he got out of the sixth grade last year and I didn't. Well, I'm sure you'll win greater respect from your brother after today, Jimmy. I'll just try to control your enthusiasm because we're getting to the best part of the experiment. And the thing we have to do next is help the lubricating oil soak in between the layers of metal by working the hinge back and forth a few times. Stop that noise. It's going to drive me right straight up the wall. <laughs> well, you can stop chewing on your suspenders to make it bearable, Jimmy, because if you'll notice, you can see that I'm still working the hinge back and forth, but now it's bending much more easily, and it isn't making any noise at all. Great day in the morning, Mr. Science. The words you speak are true. What magic is this you performed? Drive the evil spirits out of the hand. <laughs> There's no magic to it at all, Jimmy. The lubricating oil has simply formed a coating over the two layers of metal and made them much smoother. As a result, the friction has been reduced. And, of course, the squeak that resulted from the friction has gone, too. So that proves how lubrication can make anything with moving parts operate more quietly and efficiently. Wow, that sure is amazing, Mr. Science. I wonder what lubricating oil would do to the two metal plates in this tank if I coated both of them. Oh, no, no, no. Don't do that, son. Those are electrodes I'm using in another experiment. They're both charged with high-voltage electricity. Well, I don't care about that, Mr. Science. I just want to get them well lubricated oh, no. so they won't start to squeak. No, no, no. Stop it now, boy. The friction principle isn't even involved there. <laughs> Uh, this session with Mr. Science has been brought to you as a public service by the National Radish Growers Institute. Today's broadcast was the last in our current series.